looks like all the clouds disappeared today. Just like that, huh? I guess it's nice to have the sunlight. And what's going on today? I thought this was kind of interesting with drone regulations so different in various countries. How about this one where they're saying you can just get a drone license with your government ID? This one says, now citizens can become drone pilots using any government issued identity and address proof. As it says here, the central government has amended rules allowing citizens to become drone pilots using any government issued identity and address proof. The Ministry of Civil Aviation Thursday said it has notified the new Drone Rules 2023 which allows any citizens with government issued identity and address proof to become a drone pilot. A release issued by the Ministry on October 5th read, Exercising the power bestowed upon it by Section 5, Subsection 2 of Section 10 and Sections 10A, 10B and 12A of the Aircraft Act 1934, the Ministry of Civil Aviation has notified the new Drone Rules 2023 for drone pilots. At first I was wondering, isn't this common in most places around the world? Because even here you have to use your government ID to register and all that. It says the amendment has clarified that a government issued proof of identity and a government issued proof of address, example voter ID, ration card or driving license will now be accepted to apply for a remote pilot certificate even if the drone pilot does not have a passport. As to why they're doing it, they just talk about how it's potentially a huge sector to grow and India has been really aggressive in wanting, I guess, to be a leader in drone technology and all that. They do seem like they're trying to, I guess, quote, relax regulations there to promote more people to use it from the looks of it anyways. Will that strategy work? I guess we'll see. And there's still a lot of war going around the world and I was wondering what was going on here. It says US shoots down Turkish drone in Syria after it flew near American troops. US fighter jets shot down a Turkish drone on Thursday after it flew near American troops operating in northeast Syria, two US defense officials said. The unusual military encounter between two NATO allies came after a similar incident earlier in the day. No troops were injured and there was no indication that the Turks were intentionally targeting US service members, the officials said. At about 7.30 a.m. local time, two Turkish drones armed with air-to-ground weapons flew near U.S. troops near Haska, Syria, where American forces were operating to fight the Islamic State terrorist group. The Pentagon's press secretary, Brig General Patrick Ryder, said the Turkish drones were flying as close as one kilometer away from the U.S. troops early this morning, and they were conducting airstrikes that were so close to the U.S. troops that the Americans took shelter in bunkers. After the U.S. reached out to Turkey multiple times at various levels and warned that the drones were flying and dropping bombs near American troops, the drones left the area according to two defense officials. And I guess with all that, with the lack of communication, it said Ryder said the U.S. shot down the drone in self-defense and described it as a regrettable incident. There was no immediate comment from Turkey on the shooting of the drone. I mean, it's one of those things, I guess, during that situation too. You'd probably want to get rid of it right away when you don't know what's going on, huh? Will this create any type of tension or is it one of those, for example, okay, friendly fire, error type of thing? Either way, war is still going on around the world. And this was kind of an interesting piece of news where recently, if you guys remember, there was a guy that stabbed multiple people during that festival in Chinatown where apparently he was a repeat offender. So how about this one for this piece of news where it's getting more attention nowadays, I guess. This one here says, repeat violent offender released again in Vancouver. The latest chapter in the story of a well-known BC chronic offender is being highlighted as just another example of dysfunction in the criminal justice system. Mohammed Majdapur has more than 30 prior convictions including assault and assault with a weapon. On Wednesday, the 36-year-old was in community court in Vancouver facing a charge failing to report to a probation officer just six days after his most recent sentencing in August. Can you believe that with how many charges this guy has and it says he walked out of jail in his socks with his personal belongings packed into a clear plastic bag after the court released him on a series of conditions. So what, is it just one of those things like okay, supervision I guess in terms of bail conditions and all that? That's ridiculous where this guy has that many incidents and people are just like okay, go out again. I mean even like this news article was kind of recent too, like in January 19th of this year, and it's the same guy. He says like what? How BC's cash and release system is failing victims of random assaults and repeat offenders, and it was the same guy. Man, something's wrong with the system. You could actually just keep arresting these guys, putting them in over and over again, but they keep getting out, huh? In terms of this guy though, it says here, one of his hosts in Texas, a cousin, 
who now lives in Tehran, said a well-known gangster in Vancouver was among Mr. Majapur's closest childhood friends. He was surrounded by bad friends. I never got much information about that because after he went back up to Canada, we only heard from him once or twice a year and never got back any answers to our questions. Would that be excusable when someone has, like, say, a bad childhood and starts doing stuff like this? It makes me wonder, what is the solution for this? It's basically commit a crime, hurt someone, get back out again. It just keeps repeating, huh? I don't blame people for being outraged right now. Alright, see you guys later.